Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor from my channel Learning Anatomy and uh, today I will discuss with you the anatomy of the elbow joint, a very stable joint and important for its carrying angle making. Here you could see this is the elbow joint, right? And about the learning objectives, give articular surfaces the type of the elbow joint, discuss its joint capsule and synovial membrane, discuss ligaments of the elbow joint, give movements at the joint and muscles causing them, explain the anatomical significance of the carrying angle, enumerate arteries and nerves supplying to the joint, enumerate bursi around the joint. Articular surfaces of all elbow joint, here you could see articular surfaces, here you could see this. This is the trochlea of the humerus, this you see the capitulum, this is the head of the radius, right? And here in this picture, the trochlear notch of the ulna. This is head of, this is the ulna, it's uh, olecranon, and this is the trochlear notch of the ulna. Here you could see this. So the articular surfaces, it takes place, it takes place between trochlea and capitulum of the humerus and trochlear notch of the ulna and the head of the radius. Hence, there are humeroulnar and humeroradial articulations. Articular surfaces covered with island cartilage. What's the type of this joint? Elbow joint is a hinge type of synovial joint and is located 2 to centimeter inferior to the epicondyle of humerus. You could see this. This is a medial epicondyle, right? This is a lateral epicondyle. And as we move two to three centimeter below it, this is the, you know, this is um, uh, our elbow joint. And the most fully congruent position of articular surfaces is when the forearm is in a position midway between pronation and supination and is flexed to a right angle. And uh, you could see this, this is a, a 90 degree flexion, right? And uh, from his, this position, if we make it at a, uh, midway between, um, uh, you know, supination and pronation, it would be the most congruent surface, the most stable as well. Here you could see, these are the various surfaces. I told you already this. This is a superior view of the articulations, right? This is the head of the radius. You could see this. This is the articular facet of that. And this is the trochlear notch of the ulna. I told you. This is the coronoid process. Joint capsule of the elbow joint. Fibrous layer of the joint capsule surrounds the elbow joint. You could see this is our fibrous layer. You could see this is a fibrous layer joint capsule. It gets attached to the humerus at the margins of the lateral and the medial end of the articular surfaces of the capitulum and trochlea, right? This is the trochlea and this is the capitulum margins. Anteriorly and posteriorly, it goes superiorly proximal to the coronoid and the olecranon fossa. Yeah, you could see this is a fibrous layer it's anteriorly and posteriorly goes above to these surfaces. Here you could see this angle as well. This picture, fibrous layer. Here is the fibrous layer of the joint capsule. And what's a few words for the synovial membrane? It lines the internal surface of the fibrous layer of the capsule and intracapsular non articular parts of the humerus. It also continues inferiorly with the synovial membrane of proximal radioulnar joint. Joint capsule is peak anteriorly and posteriorly, but it gets strengthened on each side by the collateral ligaments, but the radial and the ulnar collateral ligaments, very important. Here you could see this is the synovial membrane lining the fibrous layer of the joint capsule internally. Here you could see this. This is the synovial membrane as well, right? It has the fat pad. This is the synovial membrane, right? This is the fat pad. And the very, very important, the ligaments of elbow joint. So let's discuss that. So collateral ligaments of the elbow joint, of course, two lateral and medial, strong triangular bands. Both of them are triangular. 
that are medial and lateral thickenings of the fibrous layer of the joint capsule. Lateral or the radial collateral ligament is fan-like, extending from lateral apicondyle of the humerus to the bl and blends distally with the annular ligament of the radius. Let's see first of all this. This is the lateral apicondyle and from here this is the radial collateral ligament going inferiorly blending with the annular ligament of the head of the radius, right? And this is um, he, as well, you can see from this angle, radial collateral ligament from this epicondyle lateral to the, sorry, and going to the this annular ligament, right? And uh, its shape is, you can see, uh, this fan shape. Let me show you more clearly, right? This is the fan shape. Here you could see this. This is the fan shape. Let me catch my laser as well for you. More clarity. Yes, you could see. This is the radial collateral ligament and uh, this is the fan shape. Cons it constitutes a proximal radial ulnar joint and alloy allows pronation and supination of the forearm. Shown you already this thing. Then few words for the medial or ulnar collateral ligament. It is triangular and extends from medial epicondyle of the humerus to the coronoid process and oligoranon of the ulna and is made up of three bands. Right? You could see this. This is the ulnar collateral ligament and from medial epicondyle it's going up to the this coronoid process. It has an anterior band, a posterior band, and an oblique band, right? This is also triangular. You could see this is triangular. So, these three bands, anterior cord-like band is strongest. This anterior cord-like, this is band is the strongest band. Posterior fan-like band is weakest. This posterior is weakest. And the slender oblique uh, band deepens the socket for the trochlea of the humerus. This oblique band, right? Mm -hmm. This is the ulnar collateral ligament. And let's talk about the stability of the giant. It is a very stable giant. Why? Due to the shapes of the bone, the strong capsule, and the close envelope of the brachialis and triceps makes the giant stable. Movements, flexion and extension take place at the elbow joint. Long axis, axis of the fully extended ulna makes an angle of about 170 degree with the long axis of the humerus. From the straight extended position, the range of flexion is about 140 degree. This movement does not take place in the line of the humerus for the axis of the hinge lies obliquely. This is very important. Formation of the carrying angle. This carrying angle is termed for the way forearm angles away from the body when something is carried, such as a pail of water. You could see this is the carrying angle, right? This is a straight line, and this is the line of the this uh, oblique line, and this is angle of the 10 to 15 in males and 15 degree greater than 15 degree in females. So, the carrying angle is greater in females. The carrying angle is more pronounced. The angle is approximately 10 degree or more in women than in men. Actually, it is greater than 15 degree. It is teleologically said to be enable the swinging limbs to clear the wide female pelvis as they walk. In the anatomical position, elbow is against the waist. Carrying angle disappears when the forearm gets pronated, the usual working position. 17 muscles, the muscles producing movements. 17 muscles cross the elbow and cause extension of the forearm and hand. Most of these muscles have some potential to affect elbow movements. Beyond that, their function and efficiency in other movements they bring about are influenced by elbow position. So the main flexes. 
brachialis and biceps brachii. The two are base brachialis and the biceps brachii are the main flexors. Brachioradialis can bring about rapid flexion in absence of resistance, even when the chief flexors get paralyzed. Normally, when resistance is present, the brachioradialis and pronator teres help the main flexors in producing slower flexion. So, the role of pronator teres as well. Main extensors now of elbow joint is the triceps brachii, especially its medial head, weakly held by the anconius too. Here you could see the, this is the this is the elbow joint and this is the flexion, right? The decrease in angle of the uh, joint by, between the bones is the brachialis, biceps brachii, brachioradialis, and the extensors, the triceps and the anconius. Here you this. This going upwards, this is the flexion. Going downwards, is ex extension. So the blood supply of the elbow, of the elbow joint. <laughs> These are the supply. This is the anastomosis around the elbow joint. It's a separate topic. will be discussed later on. So many, many arteries supply the anastomosis, make the anastomosis around the elbow joint. Now supply, elbow joint is supplied by the ulnar, median, and the musculocutaneous and the radial nerves, obviously following the Hilton law. Bursi around the elbow joint. Only few of the bursi around the elbow joint are clinically important. Three oligoranon bursi. First of all, you see this. This is various bursi around, present around the elbow joint. Subcutaneous bursa of medial epicondyle, subcutaneous bursa of lateral epicondyle, bursa of anconius, bursa at origin of the extensor carpi radialis brevis. Here you could see this is the subtendinous bursa of triceps. Here you could see subcutaneous uh, intratendinous olecranon bursi, right? These three are important and I have. Um, Enlisted over here, intratendinous olecranon bursa, subtendinous olecranon bursa present between the olecranon and the triceps tendon, and the subcutaneous or olecranon bursa that is present in the subcutaneous connective tissue over olecranon, bicepitro radial bursa, biceps bursa separates biceps tendon from the minimizes abrasion against the anterior part of the radial tuberosity. You could so. So, thank you very much. Uh, uh, for um, this uh, watching my video and uh, hope you like it if you like it to subscribe my channel thank you very much